guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. I have a quick tip for you today on using Reactor's song sequencer, or really it's a snapshot sequencer called Snapper. I've received some emails about this asking, how do I use this thing? How do I hook it up? That's what I'm going to show you how to do. So I have loaded uh, Native Instruments Reactor's Vectory, which is a sample destruction unit. It essentially takes samples, passes them through this grain resynthesis engine, and destroys them. It's pretty cool. Here's, a, here's an example of one of the snapshots. Oops. So you get the idea. Now, Vectory is packed full of all of these different snapshots, and they all have different settings and sound different. So what I want to show you how to do is to move through these, transition through these according to a sequence that you set up in Snapper. But to do that, we have to connect Snapper. So our first order of business is to come over here to the left side of the, the uh, GUI and click on this button which will take us into the structure view. You click on that and now we see this kind of top level structure view. We see Vectory going out to our outs and we have this controllers part here. What we need to do is come down to new additions, uh, sequencers, and then it's snapper macros. Snapper macros contains the, the building blocks that we need to connect an instrument to Snapper. And what those building blocks comprise A, a uh, thing that we put inside the instrument itself, and B, something that we connect to the instrument. So I'm going to drag that in. So we're going to take this and just drag it into our workspace. And now we have those macros. And if we double click on this macro, on the Snapper macros uh, section here, it brings up now Snapper and an instrument. And what it's telling you is this is basically how Snapper is supposed to connect to an instrument. So we go inside this instrument and we see this macro called Snap Slave. So I'm going to to select this. I'm going to uh, control X to cut it. And then I'm going to double click to go back one level, double click to go back two levels. And now I'm up here kind of at this top level. Now as it showed, you have to put the snap slave macro inside the instrument you, that you want to control. So here I'm going to go into Vectory, double click. Now don't freak out here, I know this is kind of scary. All we have to do here is literally paste that macro in, snap slave macro, which I've done here. I'm just going to drag this down here so you can see it. So now we have our snap slave macro in. You don't have to connect it to anything, it just has to be inside the instrument. Now if I double click again and go up one level, you'll see that now Vectory has this snap port. And what that tells you is that Vectory is now capable of accepting snapshot change information from Snapper. The next step is to get Snapper actually outside of this macro and to connect it to Vectory. So I'm going to double click and go back in Snapper macros and just select this, the main Snapper, and do the same thing. Control X, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to go back one level, and I'm going to paste it. Now, there's probably a faster way of doing this. This has just been the way that I kind of stumbled into, so if there's a faster way for you, great. The Snapper Macros is now basically an empty shell. I'm going to delete that. But now we see Snapper has this Snap port here, and Vectory now has a Snap port here. So to connect these two, I'm going to click on the Snapper Snap port, hold down the mouse button, drag over here to the Snap port on Vectory, and release and now this line or this wire shows that they're connected. Now if I double click I'll go back up to the panel view and you'll see that they're now both displayed. Now I'm going to click on uh, the header of Vectory and drag it in just so we have a more useful interface here. And now you'll see that there is this kind of demo uh, sequence in snapper that switches between the first and second snapshots and if we hit play you'll see in the uh, snapshot selection in Vectory that it is actually toggling between these two. Here we go. So there it goes. Now if we want to change the snapshots just click on this and come over here to this bar over here. Now you know this is supposed to display data it never has for me, for me. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe someone can tell me why uh, this is supposed to display time data and this is supposed to display snapshot data. It's never worked that way for me. I've just dealt with it. 
but if you click on this field here and drag up or down you'll see that the snapshot we have selected in snappers timeline will change right so we can click on these different ones and, and choose the snapshots we want you know just for the sake of of illustration I'm going to choose some some different ones and then to go through it you see that it's actually moving through them If we want to shorten this loop, I'm just going to right click on the end of this bar and drag it over here. So we're looping a short amount. So the possibilities are endless with this. Now, of course, Vectory is one of many, many reactor ensembles that you can sequence using Snapper. And it's the same exact technique no matter what you do. You take the Snapper macro, the Snap Slave macro, drop it into the instrument, and then you connect Snapper to the Snap port that is, that is newly created in that instrument. And you're off to the races. It's a lot of fun to play with. And as I said, the possibilities are limitless. So I hope this has uh, been enlightening to you, and I'll see you again real soon. Take care, guys. See ya.